No, this is fine. This is this is perfectly acceptable. Uh, this looks this looks okay. This is right where I wanted to be in the flaming swamp hellscape here. See, there's rain coming down now. Gonna put out the fires. Things are looking up for good old Snake at this point. We're in much better shape uh, than we were. Are you one of the cobras? Sad. Isn't it against the law to point your gun at somebody who's sad? If nothing else, it just seems rude, doesn't it? Oh, wait a minute. And you are one of them. It's Ghost Man, isn't it? He always shows up along with the rain. Except this time, instead of being a spectral visage who has crossed over briefly into our world, it looks like we've woken up on his side of the fence. Mm. They follow on death years, but make no mistake. The dead are not silent. So you say. Now you will know the sorrow of those whose lives you have ended. So here's where we find out how my no-kill run is going so far. The sorrow is the most clever example of storytelling through gameplay, maybe in the series. He has you marching down through this ghostly river of death, and everybody you've killed during the game comes stalking after you. So the more people you kill, the more difficult this fight becomes. And if you have a no-kill run going, it kind of becomes trivially easy. You'll notice that attacking the Sorrow isn't actually a thing. He has no help. Oh, I killed one guard somewhere. Who are you and where did you die? Is his neck broken? Did I break somebody's neck? I don't know what his deal is. Somewhere along the line, one guard died. And I have no idea where. Well, let's see how many others we've got. The, uh... The cobras that you face always show up here in the river, even though I stamina killed all of them. So there's the pain. Incoming jump scare! I warned you, you should have listened. If you listened, you would have known the jump scare was coming. So it's funny, the first time I played this game, this fight took me, I don't know, several tries at least. I didn't realize what I was supposed to do. I kept getting out the, uh, the single action army here. And I was like, do I, do I, do I shoot him, or? I shot the fear, he didn't like that. He was going to spider his way over to me. But, the single action army, you can't actually damage the Sorrow. He has no health bar, he has no stamina bar. And then, after you run out of ammo, there's not really a lot you can do except march on. And of course, the first time I played this game, I killed every single guard. I was slitting a lot of throats. And every time a ghost comes in contact with you in the river, you lose a little bit of health. Until you eventually die. Here comes the end. Up, oh, get out of the way! Okay, we made it out of the way. <laughs> yeah, there goes the end. And a pile of fish after him. I like how all the fish in the river are dead, too. So, juxtapose that with when my wife played this through this game on very easy mode. The first thing she said upon loading it up is, wait a minute, I can't hurt this guy, he doesn't have a life bar. And then she figured out the gimmick of the fight really quickly. <laughs> so we just passed the Fury, it looks like no other guards are dead. It looks like I killed one guard somewhere. And then here at the end of the river is the Sorrow hovering over his own body. 
which we saw sitting at the bottom of Delina Vodno Canyon. And then, of course, even if you make it to the end of the river, you still die in one hit. So the first time I played this game, I probably got killed in the river and continued, then I made it to the Sorrow's Body and continued. What you have to do is use your revival pill. You can wake up. So, maybe a little gimmicky, as far as boss fights go, but as you can see, the, st the Sorrow has no stamina bar. So the way to get his camo is to make it to the end of the river. As long as you get to the end of the river and touch his body, and then use the revival pill to wake up, you can, uh... You can get his camo. You don't pick up his camo as a drop, though, so for a long time I didn't know he had camo. A quicker way to win the fight is to lay down in the river and die or let the ghosts kill you or whatever, and then use the revival pill then. That works as well, but then you don't get his camo. So that's one of my favorite examples of... storytelling in gameplay. How the Metal Gear games use gameplay. Even, that, even the empty life bar, just putting that on screen, is a good example of conveying narration... Hey. Are you all right? Through gameplay mechanics. Close call. What the hell happened to me? You were halfway drowned at the bottom of the river. Almost crossed over to the other side. Other side? So that really was... Something on your mind, Snake? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Major, was there a man in the Cobra unit called the Sorrow? Yeah, I've heard of him. He was an uncanny soldier who fought alongside the boss. What kind of man So it was wasn't he? a hallucination. The Sorrow was a man with... Well, special powers. He had ESP, which was the subject of extensive research in the Soviet Union at the time. I've seen explanations of the sorrow, of people who, who interpreted his character in this game as visions or hallucinations of Snake or the boss. They say he could find out what was going on in a Because usually you can only see the sorrow when you use the R1 button, so he's not really there, it's just Snake imagining he's there. I don't buy that explanation. I think the Sorrow is a real character who is really here. I think ghosts actually exist in this universe, and the Sorrow is an example of one. That he's dead. He's been dead for two years now. Died two years ago? Because the Sorrow does attempt to communicate both with Snake and the boss, so he doesn't exist in either one of their minds. He exists independently of them. Two years ago, the boss was sent by the CIA on a secret mission to Salino Yarns. That's when she met the Sorrow who'd gone back to the Soviet Union after the Cobras broke up at the end of the war. In fact, I think this time they were a ready. lot of things in this game that the people take metaphorically, her I think you're actually Please. supposed to take them the literally. Rebels. I think that's what Kojima was, was never aiming at. There's a lot of strange or magical or supernatural okay, things that happen in this yeah. game and in this oh. series that some people like not time for try to die. play off it's as Kojima so kind of disrespecting Otherwise, his own canon, or on you, pal. just right. being hallucinations or visions or little easter egg, but I think it was Kojima's intention for you to take all of it literally as well as metaphorically. There's some more good examples of that in this game towards the end, after we get to the last scenes of the game. Let's just say I'm back. Good. But I am definitely in the camp that Kojima intended to put a character in this game who is a ghost, who has a connection to the world of the dead, who acts in part as Snake's guide back to the world of the living. The question of why is a little more complicated, because you never get a good read on the Sorrow's 
motives. It could have been out of respect for Snake as a warrior. It could be out of respect for Snake as the boss's protege. Uh, it could just be that the sorrow the behind the waterfall upstream likes to trigger that emotion in others the way the other sorrows want to, you to want to trigger their emotions in you. But you never get a good read on the sorrow's uh, motivations in this game. And I think that was intentional too. Here's a frog right here. How many times is it going to take me to try to shoot him? Two, three, got him. Mark him off my list here. So now we're in Tico Gorni, which is kind of an odd map. There's nothing. Let me eat this goat because I'm almost starving over here. Uh, there's nothing dangerous on this map. It's just a little kind of breather after the really intense run through Grozny Grad and then the sewers and the sorrow fight unless you ref uh, neglect to remove the transmitter that Ocelot sticks in you if you don't remove that transmitter there is an Ocelot unit here on the river and it makes this seem way more difficult But we actually did remove the transmitter, so we're just going to have a nice little jaunt up the river here. Are there any more foods in here? Is there any more delicious food wandering or slithering around? I guess not. I mean, there's fish down there, but that's okay. Eva said she'd meet us behind this waterfall, so... Eh, we don't need to save. We're probably fine. So there's one more interesting thing about the Sorrow that doesn't come up in this game. It doesn't come up until Metal Gear Solid 4. If you recall Metal Gear Solid 1, there was a character named Psycho Mantis. And Psycho Mantis was not a medium the way the Sorrow was. I'm going to be talking about the Sorrow all through this romantic scene starring... Uh, Snake's dinner and Eva's butt. That I mean, I'm just gonna. It's just more interesting to me than gawking at her boobs. Don't like snakes. Which I think sets me apart from other MGS3 Let's Players. But anyway, Psychomantis wasn't a medium. Psychomantis was a psychic, which means he was able to read minds and brainwash people, and he used his mental abilities to screw with people's heads. And he also had a role in Metal Gear Solid V in the Phantom Pain. He appears as a child and does much the same thing. How does it feel, Aspire? He spends his whole life uh, enjoying getting inside people's heads and messing around with them. So Metal Gear Solid 4 has a boss named Screaming Mantis, and she has much the same powers. You find out that she's using mind control to control most of the boss fights in that game. And then when you fight her as a boss... She has two dolls in her hand, and one of the dolls, they're like voodoo dolls, one of the dolls can control living people, and the other doll can control dead people. So she can, like Psycho Manus, she could use her living doll to jump into Meryl's mind, because Meryl's present in that scene, and then Meryl puts her gun to her head and starts blowing her brains out and you gotta deal with it. Or she can use her other voodoo doll to resurrect any guards you've killed in the room, to animate their bodies as zombies and come after you. One of the most killer boss fights in the series. I'm a big fan of the Screaming Manus boss fight. But the way that they set the character up is her living doll is patterned after Psycho Mantis. And her dead doll is patterned after the Sorrow. I thought that was an interesting little tidbit. But then, after you kill Screaming Mantis, her armor reanimates. Her body's dead. You've killed it. She's faded away or whatever, and then Drebin told you her terrible life story. But then her armor reanimates in midair, and Psycho Mantis inhabits it, and he begins talking to you uh, much in the same way he did before his own fight in MGS1. Kind of giving the uh, impression that Psycho Mantis was controlling Screaming Mantis somehow, even from beyond the grave. Like the Sorrow says... The dead are not silent, and Psychomantis, even in death, is not silent. Don't worry about it. 
But of course, Snake beats Psycho Mantis again too because there's no more memory cards to read and there's no more vibration in the controllers. And it's not like I can't see. But then you get an R1 screen in MGS4. You can push R1 to see through Snake's eyes, just like you can in this game. Is that a little romance over? I think a little romance is over now. And if you do, and you look up on the ledges above where you fought Screaming Mantis and above where Psycho Mantis had his little scene, you see the Sorrow standing up there, and he says the same line he just told Snake here. Or rather, I guess he t told the boss here, but then Snake heard it through his visions. He says about the path of the warrior will always be with you. Not the path of the warrior, the spirit of the warrior will always be with you. So... It gives the implication that the Sorrow was controlling, or at least involved in Psycho Mantis, using Psycho Mantis' maybe latent psychic abilities even after death to show that vision and the subsequent vision of himself to Solid Snake. What do I want to equip here? Because after Eva gives you your gear back, you're kind of... Uh, we don't want the fork, we want the spray... You know what? I thought we were gonna want this handkerchief, but I forgot we can get the we get our cigar, our cigarette spray refilled from Johnny. So that's nice. We don't need to worry about that. Shout out to McLean who sponsored this video, and to everybody who makes my channel possible by supporting me on Patreon.